Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. Levelling up in itself is about as close to an acknowledgement as we are ever likely to get from Westminster, and in particular this Conservative and Unionist Government, that there is a huge gulf in access to wealth and opportunities in the UK. It is not a new thing. Throughout the 21st century, this has continued. The rich are getting richer, and the poor are getting poorer. At the start of COVID, I wrote that we were not all in this together and that the poorest, those living in the areas of worst deprivation, would suffer most and would experience a higher mortality rate. Unfortunately, I was right. Six out of ten people who have died with COVID-19 are disabled. And if you live in a deprived area, then you are more than twice as likely to die from COVID. The chief executive of the health think tank Health Foundation, Jennifer Dixon, said, COVID-19 is not a great leveller. The pandemic is having an unequal impact on our already unequal society. Therefore, it is clear to see this great act of benevolence levelling up is long overdue and is required because large areas of our society have been neglected for a long time. Areas such as my constituency of Inverclyde have suffered long before the shipyards were closed by Thatcher. All she did was pile misery on top of despair. The labour-intensive industries paid poorly and worked men and women into early graves. And as those industries died, we never adjusted to develop employment that was rewarding and either financially or for our well-being. And as a result, inequality remains rife and patching won't fix it. It should come as no surprise that there are many people who believe levelling up is no more than a bribe to endear the government to the electorate prior to the next general election, which is currently scheduled for after the new boundaries are put in place. Of course, with his new or his old powers reinstated, the Prime Minister can effectively call a general election any time he likes. Buying seats is one way to prop up a government. And the thing is, as MPs, we will root to our constituencies and we will always be able to find ways of investing in and improving them. Some constituencies will need more than others, which is why the funding should go to the most in need. Some people, including the Secretary of State, have questioned that I, as an SNP MP, am willing to appeal to Westminster to fund projects in Inverclyde. Does this not prove that we are better together? It is really very simple. We have been paying into Westminster for all these years, while our industries were left to wither and die, and it is high time we got something back. In Inverclyde, we have two excellent projects which will host that will put what I will pitch for funding. A culture quarter that will host artists, creatives and artisans. It will be close to my ocean terminal where we welcome 150,000 cruise passengers every year. And it will save two existing buildings of incredible heritage from destruction. And the Inverclyde Council will also be looking for funding to improve the transport system around the town centre. I could, of course, be petulant and turn my back on these opportunities, but my heart is in Inverclyde and the prosperity of the people, and I will not miss out on any opportunity that can improve Inverclyde. Madam Deputy Speaker, in closing, I was reminded by Councillor Rose Robertson of a story about General Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, when he was asked about dubious funds being used by his charity, and he is reported to have said, I shall take all the money I can get, and I shall wash it clean with the grateful tears of widows and orphans. The shame is that 155 years later, we still have such inequality in our society, and that runs throughout this very disunited kingdom.